Today is Monday, July 27th, 2015. As you can tell by the title, and obviously what we got in front of us here, we're going to be testing a um, speaker today. We're actually going to be talking about ohms. Um, this happens to be just an old subwoofer that my daughter had in her car, a little 10 inch. Um, nothing wrong with it, uh, but it, so it makes a, the, you know, the perfect test subject here. Um, I've got a lot of videos on uh, resistance and all that stuff using the multimeter, but I don't think I've done one on speaker ohms yet. So I've done them on resistors, all kinds of things. So what we're going to do is uh, kind of talk about uh, what the numbers mean and how to connect them and all that stuff. So this right here, you can see, is a dual voice coil uh, sub. Uh, a lot of them are single. So this has got four, four ohm coil on each side. Um, well, each, each side is four ohms. It's, the coils are actually inside, but um, a lot of them will be single. It would be a four, an eight, um, some are two. Now this you can run, uh, so let's say you had an amplifier that uh, couldn't be bridged, um, but it's two channel and you got 400 watts max. You can run you know, each of these coils or each of these wires to each channel um, to get the maximum performance out of this. Now if you had uh, an amplifier that was two channel, could be bridged mono to one channel and was two ohm capable, you can actually run this, uh, both these together, positive, positive, negative, negative, parallel basically and you could create, you know, get even more power. So it depends on what your amplifier is uh, capable of. So that's one thing you gotta figure out at first. So, uh, you know, get a lot of questions on the radio things. That's why I'm actually m making this video. And uh, a lot of people don't know, you know, they think you can just hook wires up here and there, and then when the bass hits or whatever, you know, cuts out, that kind of thing. Which could be grounds, could be many things, but a lot of times it's just you're overpowering the amplifier. So first we're gonna show you how to actually test the ohms. So I've got, uh, I've got a meter here, and I've got an ohm setting, which uh, kind of looks like a little set of headphones. I don't know if you can see that, but so we're going to just run positive, positive on one coil, positive to the positive terminal on the meter, and negative to the other terminal on the meter. Now it'll take a, a little bit of time to actually get your reading. So here we are. So we are getting between three eight or 3, 8, and 4, 0. Oh. So that is a, that's how we know we've got a 4 ohm coil here. Now this particular sub does not say, I was just assuming actually, most of them are dual 4 ohm. So that's a 4 ohm. Other side's also a 4 ohm. They're, you're not gonna have a 4 and a 2. It'll always be the same on each side. So let's say we did have an amplifier that was capable of a 2 ohm load on a single channel. What we'd wanna do is the positive from this side and the positive from this side we would want to run those together. So we're going to tie these together, positives, and the same thing with the negatives. And what we'll do is we'll see what the reading is now. It should be right around 2 ohms. So let's go ahead and hook our meter to it. Should have brought my little alligator clips down. It would have been a little bit helpful. So you can see between 1.9 and 2, there we go, it's 2, so that is 2 ohms. So we know we've got, first of all, we know the coils are good, because we're getting the, the ohm reading, and, well, you know, we know this is correct. Now let's say you had an amplifier, and this would make, uh, before I go on this, so if you had two 4 ohm speakers, so consider this two speakers, you would hook them up the same way. So if you had two single speakers that just had one coil on each subwoofer, then you would, you know, it would be positive from each speaker to negative. Each speaker would give you two ohms, provided that they are four ohm. Um, let's say you had a, an amplifier that wasn't quite capable of the two ohm load, or you had a series of, series of speak, uh, you know, of subs. So what we're going to do now is we want to run it in series. So what I want to do is I want to take the positive from one speaker or coil, and the negative from the other coil. We want to attach those together. And then the two we have left over should be a positive and negative. So we're going to positive the negative, and this should yield us about 8 ohms in series, as long as everything's good to go. Let that build up. So right, uh, we're at 7.3, somewhere around there. So almost 8 ohms, not quite, which is typical. None of them are going to read perfect. So in series, again, the positive from one coil 
or one speaker to the negative of the other. So those are connected together and the, uh, the negative and positive from the other uh, speaker are, ho are, are hooked to the amplifier. So it's just like a, it's like a big loop. So again, <clears throat> I've actually got the negative from this one, the positive from this one ran together. And then I've got the negative from this one ran to the meter, the positive from this one ran to the meter, ran together. So that would create a higher ohm reading, which in turn you're getting less power from the amplifier because you figure most of them are rated at eight ohms or four, usually four. That's their, their usually their peak power setting. So you're gonna not quite cut that in half, but pretty close. Um, and to do this in a with a bunch of speakers, you could just daisy chain down the line. Now you got to figure. So, let's say we had two of these, dual coil or four speakers, whatever. Dual coil, we want to run them in parallel each set. So we have two ohms for each speaker. Then at the end, if we run them in series, we'll have four ohms. So I could run four of these or two of these or four, you know. However, the the sky's the limit. Um, but at the end, you're going to want to correct that. So. Again, two of these uh, dual coil crammed together, got two, two ohms each speaker, then you would want to run them in series at the very end to equal four ohms. So four speakers on four ohm, it, you know, the possibilities are endless. Now when you start getting into like um, odd number of speakers, it gets a little bit more difficult there because uh, you've got to figure out, you know, where the balance is. Um, Anyway, that's it. Just a quick little, you know, thing. If you've got some, if you've got a set of subwoofers that don't have the reading on them or you can't find it anywhere, which these days with the internet, you could typically find them. Uh, but if you can't for some reason, this is a, an awesome way to check it. That way you know for sure you're not going to overpower your amplifier, you know, because it runs hot, all kinds of things. And you don't want to go below the, the rating. I mean, I've done it in the past. Um, I've ran amps down to half ohm before. And, uh, you know, eventually you do smoke them. I got pretty lucky with them, but uh, yeah, that's it. Just a quick video on how to read ohms, how to connect your speakers, that kind of thing. Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, to me it does. Maybe to you it doesn't. But if you do have any questions or comments, be sure to post those below. Please subscribe, and thanks for watching.